Hello there, Sherman, Leave a Legacy, episode 56, focusing on communication. One of the great things I liked in uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People was the conversation that you have these different bank accounts as you engage with people. And you either make deposits by adding in nice conversation, or you take withdrawals from that person's bank account by saying some not so nice things. I also read a book where, and I can't remember what it was, I thought it was called Full Engagement uh, of Conversation, but it was the idea that each of us had pails. And when you gave some of your, your, your water away in your pail to someone else, you actually kept the same level of water. But if you decided to take water away from other someone, someone else's pail and put it in your pail, you actually lost the same amount of water that you stole from someone else. So not only did you have a negative engagement with someone where you took out water out of their bucket, but then you also lost it on your end. And so it's, um, uh, I'm going back to the analogy of the bank, is that if you continually withdraw from in, in, from more, in a form of communication from someone else's bank account, eventually you're gonna find yourself with um, overdrawn. And the the interesting thing about communication, and I th and I think a lot of times people are like, well, millennials don't know how to communicate because they're using these phones all the time. I think really what it comes down to is identifying how people do communicate. Because it's the same thing as when the, the telephone was first introduced, that all of a sudden, oh, you're just gonna be on the phone all the time, you're not gonna talk to people face to face. It actually enhanced the communication level because now you can connect with people in, in more in a more meaningful way. And I think that's how it is as well, is that you know, even though my friends communicate a lot on Facebook, now when I see them, I can say, hey, I saw that you had another kid. I, I saw that you were on vacation in Phoenix. I saw that you know, I can stay connected with them without them having to, to call every friend of theirs and say, hey, I just come back on vacation from, from Cabo. It's the best time. And that can be a great thing to be able to really connect with people intimately on a one-on-one -on -one level at the same time still feel connected even though you're thousands of miles apart from each other. The other thing to identify in communication is that it's okay to have a disagreement. And it's okay to have differing views. I think a lot of times in through um, our conversations, we want to persuade the other person to see things from our perspective. You, want to, you don't want to persuade them. You just want to show them your perspective. And then just so they can see your perspective on a certain particular issue. You don't need to convince them to see it from your view because a lot of the times they won't change their view. They just want to make sure that they understand where you're coming from. I think that's an important uh, differentiator there, is that you don't need everyone to agree with what you want. And in your personal relationships, you don't want everyone to agree with you, or else you're gonna get the same, um, the same point of view, the same perspective, and there's not gonna be any growth where there isn't any challenge. And once you open your mind to see things from someone else's perspective, now you've put yourself in a position to really take yourself to that next level of communication in saying, I, I, I recognize that we don't agree on this perspective and you can see my perspective, I can see your perspective. What's, how do we move forward with this? And that's the next evolution of communication is now you're getting to problem solving and I'd say overall collaboration isn't necessarily the end game of this one or compromise. Sometimes you can find a completely unique answer that you're that neither one of you had originally had decided. And I find that the more candid the conversation, uh, more transparent the, the communication, the more likely it is people are going to trust you and find you genuine. When you try to put yourself out there as a different persona and try to be somebody else, people are going to read through that. And that's going to bug them, and that's going to be problematic in, in establishing that trust level with with people, and ultimately from a business level, being able to execute in a, in a timely manner. Um, there's a great book by Stephen Covey, Stephen M. R. Covey, it's Stephen Covey's son, uh, called "The Speed of Trust," and that once the trust is really high, the speed of doing business is going to be is going to be very very high as well. At the same time, if trust is really low, then you're probably not going to do business at all. Um, or it's going to be very expensive to do so because there's going to be a lot of engagements and there's always going to be questioning and then a need to always check back in on, on where you're at. So as you communicate, recognize what's the best way for the other person to communicate with you. So for example, let's say one of your clients is a physician. So calling them on their cell phone or calling their pager isn't ideal if they're in surgery. But maybe you can send them an email and throughout the day they might check their email in between surgeries. 
So that gives you an opportunity to identify what is the best way to communicate with people. At the same time, there's, there's multiple ways that you can continually communicate with people. You can have them in an email list and constantly be dripping on them that way. You can be connected via Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat. Again, you're connecting with your community. Then, at the same time, when you're with people face to face, you can have a much more intimate engagement where it's all about them. Because typically, from a firm perspective or company perspective, on social media platforms, you're talking about you and about your value to the marketplace. However, when you're sitting down with someone face to face, now it should be all about them. They should be at the center focus of all the questions, of all the conversation. So that way you can glean out as much information as you can on how you can best serve and satisfy those clients' needs. Question, how effective are you in communication? The follow-up to that is, how do you know if you're getting better? Have a great day, everybody.